A typical C program that consists of a single file typically has these seven sections to it in this order. And so we'll take a look at a high level overview of these seven sections which invest.c has. And then in later videos, we'll go into the details of each section. The first section is program comments. This is very important. Right at the top of your file should be a set of comments that tells anybody what this program does and how to use it. The next thing is uh, preprocessor commands. So preprocessor is, the preprocessor is actually something that runs before the compiler. And in this case, what it does is it includes definitions from another file called standardio.h. And those definitions allow your program to use functions like printing to the screen and taking input from the keyboard. So that's a preprocessor command. The next section of the code will typically have data type definitions. We already have char, int, float, and double available to us as data types, but occasionally it's useful for us to define a new data type that's particularly useful for our program. So that comes next. The next thing is to define global variables. And here's an example of defining a global variable, int global var. So int says it's an integer, and by putting it here outside of any function, that means that this global variable is going to be usable by any function that appears after it. So it's called global because it's global in scope. It can be used anywhere in this program. We should be careful with their usage, though, because global variables break modularity and can make it a little bit harder to debug a program. But sometimes it's convenient to use them. <clears throat> after defining the global variables, we have function prototypes. And this is a concept that we haven't seen yet. So here we have the definition of a function, void send output double star r int years. And what a function prototype does is it creates a definition of a function that you're going to use in the program, but before you've given all of the code that defines how it operates. All you're doing is you're telling the compiler, be ready, there's going to be a function coming that's called send output. And it's going to be of type void. That means it doesn't return anything. And it's going to take two arguments, two inputs. One is an integer called years. And the other one is a pointer to type double. So as we saw before when we talked about basic pointers, this star means that ARR is the name of the variable. And it's a pointer to something of type double. Okay. So this function prototype doesn't tell us how send output works. But it's telling the compiler, be ready. If main here calls a function called send output, you know that it should require two arguments, a pointer to type double and an integer. And you know that it's not going to return anything. Okay? So that's a function prototype. This is for helper functions. Down here, we define the main function. And we've seen that before, how the main works. This is where the program starts executing and finishes. And then at the very bottom of the file is the definition of the helper functions that we had prototypes for above. So here we actually define how send output works. So between this brace here and this brace down here is going to be the code that tells us what send output does. Now, because it's already been, been defined here in the function prototypes, the main function is allowed to use it even though the definition of all the details has not yet appeared. So these are the seven sections of a typical single file C program.